This is Scott Becker with the Becker Business Minute, the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Thank you for joining us today, and, and thank you to Holly Buckley who's joining us today. Holly lives at the intersection of private equity and healthcare. She heads up the healthcare department at McGuire Woods. She's going to talk to us today about two issues, really trends in what you're seeing in deal making and private equity, uh, the volume of deals, pricing, what's going on, and also talent management in sort of a changing, sort of challenging, fascinating business time. Holly, thoughts on what you're seeing in sort of deal trends? What's the pace of deal activity? What are you seeing out there? Yeah. Hi, Scott. And as always, thanks for having me on. Um, I think a few things are pretty apparent this year. One, um, I think the credit markets and the general state of the economy have really slowed some of the big deals, um, what we kind of refer to as the platform deals. And so we're just not seeing as many of those. And we're seeing a lot more um, kind of, uh, not to say that 2022 showed recklessness, but a lot more kind of very deliberate care over whether or not a deal makes sense and whether or not the finances make sense because it's a much uh, much tighter game in terms of how the economy is going to be operating in the next year or two. And so definite slowdown on the platform deal side. But there's still a huge amount of capital to be deployed and we're seeing still very vigorous and energetic activity on the add-on side. So existing platforms continuing to add to their um, kind of existing investment. Um, and we've been really, really busy with those and seeing a lot of activity. Those deals are still super competitive. Um, and we're also seeing, I think, a, a fair amount of runoff from 2022. We saw almost an unprecedented amount of deals push that were scheduled to be 2022 closes, but there was just no real... Um, uh, tax or other driver to really close things out before the end of the year. And so unlike in prior years where there was just this huge crush to get things done by the end of the year, we had a lot of deals fall off into January. So we're seeing those deals close now. And it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the quarter and the first half of the year look after that happens. Thank you. My impression is that things are sort of picking up traction again. That's what I seem to hear from advisors, from leaders, from private equity investors. Is that your sense that things are sort of picking up some? Uh, you know, we may hit get hit with that a little bit later in the cycle because a lot of the initial kind of processes and um, business discussions are going to be happening before they're ready to really turn on legal. So from our side, I'd say we're seeing some folks prepare for processes, um, but we're not seeing kind of as much of the platform activity hitting on the legal side yet, though it may be happening in the kind of pre-legal areas. Thank you very much. And then talent management through ups and downs. How do you sort of think about talent management as, you know, things get busy, they get slow, they get busy. How do you keep your best people, your your people sort of sort of thriving and challenged when they're both underwhelmed and overwhelmed? How do you sort of think about talent management through different periods of time? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I mean, I think the labor market's been so interesting. I think in 2021 and on to into part of 2022, we saw this crazy, just hyper um I don't think of the right word, but almost transient uh, labor market where there was so many people kind of leaving everywhere on the, in the professional industry um, and, and hopping around and making moves. And so it was really hard to retain talent. And there was a lot of, pe a lot of kind of revolving door syndrome. Um, and I think now things have settled down a lot. There's a lot less of that. So we're still a we're able to much more easily uh, recruit, and then we're not seeing the same amount of attrition. So I think the stability really helps from a talent management perspective. Um, but in terms of keeping people engaged as, as kind of the, the ebbs and flows of work go, I mean, I think part of it is just refocusing based on what's in front of you. And one thing that we try and really refocus on is things like business development and training and looking at some of the other things um, in our practice areas that we need to focus on that we just can't when we're just inundated with deal work. So we're not quite at that point yet. I'd say we're still pretty inundated with deal work, but I think we are starting to say, look, if we do have a bit of a slowdown, what are some of the things we really want to achieve this year in terms of um, learning and development and making sure our younger folks who really were impacted during COVID um, and, and remote work, how do we make sure their skills are where they need to be 
and and that they're kind of getting the the training and mentorship and apprenticeship that they need to be really great lawyers. Thank you. And when you look at the rest of 2023, as a leader, any advice to other leaders and, and sort of how do you look at sort of leadership and, and what advice would you give to leaders? You know, uh, this is something I've been thinking about a lot recently, and I think um, it is the need for quiet time and the opportunity to step back and focus on strategy as opposed to, again, dealing with what's just in front of you. And I think uh, I had an interesting conversation with someone a couple of weeks ago who made the observation that the more senior you get, the more of that quiet time you need. Um, there's only a, there's very much a limit on how effective you can be when you're just fully uh, blocking and tackling and, and dealing with the problem right in front of you and not looking at what do I actually want to achieve from a big picture perspective. And so I'd say it's really carving out that time um, to figure out what your goals are and how you're going to get there on a on a routine basis. But but that's really an insightful thought because really early on in careers, people are more and more focused focused on task orientation, getting this done, getting that done, getting this done. Then they grow a little bit further, and it becomes task plus deeper thinking plus deeper analytics and so forth. Then you grow a little bit further on, and they're still task oriented, still getting things done. But there's really thinking about the direction of the ship and what you have to be doing, what the group has to be good at, and what you have to be good at. And, and that evolution towards, as you get into different levels of management, different levels of leadership, there's a higher premium on making sure you're just, you know, there, there's always, always important to be thoughtful, but there's, there's a higher premium on really setting direction and clarity about where you're going, not just on execution. And then you have to execute as well. No, fascinating. Holly, as always, I want to thank you for joining us on the Becker Private Equity Podcast, the Becker Business Minute Podcast. Thrilled today to be joined by Holly Buckley, leader of the healthcare department at McGuire Woods, and brilliant sort of lawyer and business person at the intersection of healthcare and private equity. We've talked about sort of the private equity update, what's going on with that, talent management, leadership, and a lot more. Holly, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you so much.